Hi, this is Ginger from My Sister Scrapper. I want to share a project with you that I created using the Graphic 45 Sunkissed collection. For this project, I used the 12 by 12 collection as well as the chipboard elements. And I also used a couple of pieces of the 8x8. I also used some of the Graphic 45 regular tags and the square tag. And then I also used some of their shabby chic drawer pulls. And then the box is one of their rectangular matchbook boxes in the ivory. So what I did on the front cover is I used the papers to decorate the front. And then here is the side and the side and then here's the back and then here is the front part of the box and I used the drawer pull upside down so it would be easy to grab and then this is a little piece of metal that I had in my stash and I think it's from Prima. I did layer on some flowers here. These are from Petaloo. These are just some that I had on my stash. I think this one's from Prima. This is Wild Orchid Crafts. Here's one of the chipboard elements and I used some uh, little glitter brads that I had on my stash. Some more chipboard here and these are two little wooden uh, embellishments that I had in my stash as well and then I have some uh, gingham ribbon around the top of this little graphic 45 tag. So the way this works is if the drawer pulls out and then the top pops up just like this. Super cute. So I just want to do something different and then inside obviously I had to make a little mini album because couldn't help myself. <laughs> so I have a little folio on the inside and I did decorate the inside of the drawer with the super cute um, paper with the kids on it. So when you have the drawer open it pops up like this and when you close the drawer it lies flat like this. So for the little folio it is um, let's see I think it measures five and a half by seven and a half and the spine is one and a quarter I think let me double check yep five and a half by seven and a half on the front cover again I use some of the chipboard elements this is one of the images fussy cut from the paper I also use the patterns and solids that go with this collection that's what is on the front cover here some more flowers for my stash and then I found this really cute little charm. It's a cute little crab. So I added that as well and a cute little shiny glitter button. Added some little sequins to the front here. I inked around all the edges with walnut stain. And then I did use rusty hinge on some of the orange papers as well as blue jeans on some of the blue papers. I added a little Tim Holtz Brad fastener right here and added some little charms. I have a cute little fish. Two cute little flowers that I thought matched the collection and then a cute little turtle which I thought was adorable and here is the back so it opens like this and I've got two sides here on this side I have a cute little pocket here and I used the graphic 45 square ivory tag to create the top portion of the pocket actually I used the whole tag but um, I added a jump ring and a little chipboard element and I used the rusty hinge distressing to cover the back and there's a little magnet closure here so this opens like this again some more design paper and I did use the brand new um, graphic 45 tag dies to cut the papers to go over my tag they are amazing <laughs> absolutely amazing and then put some more design paper here and then this is an accordion album so you can see it's got lots of room to put lots of stuff in it and I just went ahead and matted these cut aparts that were from the cut apart sheet and put the cute little sea turtle paper on the back and then over here I put some more of the design paper here and I'm added them on ivory cardstock so again there's a lot of room in there you can put a bunch more stuff in there as well so that just closes again with a little magnet and then over on this side I made a little shell shaker element with one of the chipboard pieces fussy cut this little turtle from the paper and I added some um, little seed beads and some German glass glitter on the inside put it on some foam tape and put it up here on this little belly band and then this slides out and it's a cute little um, booklet with some little chipboard elements here again some more paper and this is actually from the 8x8 this little piece right here so it opens like this you've got a place for photo here and here and then here and then again I busted got this from the 8x8 as well it says buildings and castles and memories so it just folds back like that and slides right back in here like this 
And then there's a little magnet closure here, so this flips open. And again, I added another little uh, strip of the cute little turtle <laughs> border strip, and I just glued it down on one edge so you can stick the little photo if you want underneath here. And then I made a little waterfall right here. Again, this is one of the elements from the 12 by 12, and I just left the little sand dollar border strip at the top. And you flip it up like this. I added some of the patterns and solids on the back side of each of these, and a strip of the paper is here as well. Super, super adorable paper. Love the colors, the orange and the blue. And then on the last page, I made a little um, string closure. And I used two little chipboard pieces and glued them together around my little, uh, this is some wax cording from May Arts. And it just goes around like this. And then these open right here. Cute little design paper right here. And then um, I made two little pockets on the insides of these. And these are two little tags that were fussy cut from the paper. Cut apart sheet. Adorable. Love it. So that goes back like this and then this just wraps around. Um, I did use some solid orange card stuck that I had in my stash to make the little die cut the little circles and I just used a circle punch. I think I used a three quarter inch just so um, it'd be a little sturdier and I did punch them out two or three times and glued them all together just to give them some stability. So that goes back like that, closes like that, and this closes like this. So there you go, that's my little folio and my little pop-up box that I created using the Graphic 45 Sunkissed collection. I used 12 by 12 chipboards, as well as a couple pieces from the um, 8 by 8 and as well as the 12 by 12 patterns and solids. So now I'm gonna show you how I created this little folio for the inside of my box. So I'm gonna do a tutorial with you, so you're gonna to need to get your supplies. Again, the folio measures five and a half by seven and a half, and the spine is one and a quarter. So what you're going to need is obviously your cardstock. And for the tutorial, even though I did use ivory in that, I'm going to use craft because I think craft shows up better um, on video. So that's what I'm going to use to show you how show you how I created the project. You're going to need your bone folder, your scissors, your scoreboard your ruler, your basic supplies, you know, that you're gonna need, your adhesives. Um, I like to use score tapes, so I have a half inch, three eighths, and a quarter inch, but you can use whatever adhesive you prefer, because I always believe that adhesive is a personal choice, But and this is my choice. And then you will need your scoreboard and some sort of a corner rounder if you wanna round your corners. And then if you wanna do a magnet closure like I did, um, I have a lot of people ask about the magnets. And the magnets I use are from Basic Gray, and you can purchase them. Um, I haven't seen them in any of the big box stores, but you can get them online at several uh, scrapbook stores. And if you have a local scrapbook store, you can check with them. These are the small ones. They're my favorite. Um, and they do come in a small and a large, but these are the small ones. And those are what I'm going to use for the project today. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get our chipboard and... Here are the measurements that you're going to need. So for the chipboard, you're going to need two pieces, and they're going to measure, again, five and a half by seven and a half. You're going to need two of those. And then for your spine piece, you're going to need a piece of chipboard that's one and a quarter by seven and a half. And you're going to need, I use medium weight chipboard. A lot of people ask where I get it. It's from Graphics, and you can get it online. Um, I also buy it on Amazon, so we're going to need that. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wrap our chipboard. So to wrap our chipboard, we're going to need a piece of our cardstock. And a 12 by 12, and you're going to trim that 12 and a 12 piece down to 9 and a half by 12. And then you're going to need a little extra piece as well that's going to be about 4 inches by 9 and a half. So what we want to do first set this out of the way is I went ahead and kind of did some prep work just to make it a little faster so it's not such a long video we're going to attach these two pieces together to make one longer piece of cardstock so I added a quarter inch cord score tape to my four by nine and a half piece and again the key to any score tape or double-sided tape is you need to burnish it number one it makes the backing come off and it does make it stick really well so we're going to take the backing off of this and we're going to go ahead and line these two pieces up, overlapping them just by that quarter of an inch, just like so. Okay. 
And then again, we're going to burnish it really, really well. Okay, so now we have one long piece of paper. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and I like to use my scoreboard just to create a couple of score lines that I can use as a guide to make sure that I'm keeping my um, chipboard pieces straight so we don't want to get a wonky book here. So we're going to get our scoreboard out. And we are going to score with the ginormous piece across the top. We're going to score at one inch. And again, the score line is strictly a guide, so we can go ahead and make sure that we're keeping our chipboard even. And then we're going to go ahead and rotate it a quarter turn. And we're going to score at another one inch. And I'm going to score on this end, so that would be right here. So again, these are just score lines that I can use as a guide. And I know your paper's too big, but just go ahead and shift it up. And then just continue your score line all the way down. Now there is some double thickness here, so make sure you're gentle here with your cardstock. Okay, so we're done with our scoreboard for now. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to add our chipboard pieces. So we have two covers and we have a spine. So go ahead and add whatever adhesive you want. And again, I went ahead and added mine. I added score tape to the back. We're going to take the backing off. And we're going to line our chipboard up with the corner here that we've created with our score lines, okay? So take the backing off. And I'm just going to line it up here along the top and the bottom and stick it down. Okay. Now what we want to do is we need to add our spine piece. But as you know, you need to leave a space. And if you're not good at eyeballing it, um, there's several different things you can do. I'm going to share. Um, it, it, I usually just, you know, kind of eyeball it because I've done this so many times. What you can do is you can take some of your scrap pieces of chipboard, as long as it's the same chipboard that you're using for your product or your, your project, and then just go ahead and take, this is kind of thick because I'm using craft, so I'm going to take three pieces of my scrap chipboard, hold them together, and I'm going to butt it up against my cover here, and then I can take this piece and line it up, and that will give me the perfect space that I need, which will allow for the cardstock that's going to be on top and the card stuck on bottom so that way it'll fold nice and neat. So again I'm going to stack these together. There's three pieces. I'm going to butt it up against here and using my guide here I'm going to go ahead and stick my spine piece down just like that. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing with our last piece which is our back cover. Again, taking my chipboard, butting it up against the spine piece, using my score line as a guide, and sticking it down. So there we go. Now I'm going to flip it over and just burnish this side really, really well. And it's okay that I have pencil lines here. I can erase them if I want, but I'm going to cover it up with design paper, so it's no big deal. <laughs> Okay, so now what we have is, we've got, this is a little bit long here, so I want to make sure that I trim this off so it's exactly one inch, so I have one inch space all the way around. The easiest way to do it, you can stick it in your trimmer and trim it off, you can use your ruler and a pencil, I'm just going to use my score tool right here, I'll just draw a line and trim it with my scissors. Now what we want to do is I like to stand my project up and just bend my hard stuff over just to train it so it knows what I want it to do. 
Now, if you want, you can take your, on the two sides that you didn't score, you can take your bone folder and go around the edges just to break up the fibers a little bit easier before you fold it all the way over. On the two sides that you didn't score, and again, we're just going to stand it up and train it to go over like we want it to. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to add our score tape. We want to fold this over and we want to wrap our chipboard. Um, and everybody has their own way of wrapping chipboard. This is just how I like to do it. Um, we're going to go ahead and add our score tape to the perimeter of our cardstock as well as the perimeter of our chipboard. So I'm going to use the half inch for this. You can use whatever you have. If you'd prefer to use a wet glue, you're more than welcome to do that. I don't go all the way to the edge because we're going to miter our corners. So we don't need to go all the way to the edge. Okay, now we're going to go along the perimeter of our chipboard. And for that, I like to use the quarter inch. And I start here in the corner and I go along the edge. And when I get to where my space is, I just take my thumb and stick it right in there and just continue on all the way to the end. I do the long sides first and then the short sides. Okay, and I'm going to just burnish really quick. Now what we want to do is we want to trim our corners before we fold it over just to take out some of the bulk. And again, there are several ways that you can do this. You can just be brave like me and just eyeball it. <laughs> you can take your pencil and a ruler and it's about an eighth of an inch away and you can draw a little pencil line and cut on your pencil line. You can take a piece of your scrap chipboard, put it at an angle up against the corner and a draw pencil line and then cut it off. But I'm going to eyeball it how I roll. <laughs> it's easier to leave too much than take off too much because you can't glue it back on. But it's all good. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and wrap our chipboard. Fold our long sides down first. And then our short ends. So we're going to take the backing off, fold it over. I'm going to flip it around and do the other side. Now we want to do the short ends. So what I like to do with my corners, I just take my nail and just press that down, tuck it in a little bit, and then fold over my edges. You can do your corners however you like. This is just how I like to do them. Okay, so there is our cover. We've wrapped our chipboard with our cardstock. Now what we want to do is we want to cover the seams right here. So what I did is you don't need to use a big piece. It's just bulk because we're going to cover these other panels up. But we do want to cover this section. Up. So I cut a piece that measures four and a four by seven and a quarter, and I'm gonna put this on the inside right here. 
just like that. I'm going to center it top to bottom and left to right, and I made it a quarter inch smaller than the height of my chipboard. So again, this piece is cut at four by seven and a quarter. And we'll do the same thing. We're going to add our score tape to the perimeter here. And I also, to make sure that I don't get any bubbles, I'm going to add some score tape to my chipboard pieces right on the edges. So I'm just going to run a piece here and here and on the center spine piece also. Okay. Now I'm going to do stuff as well. Okay, so we're going to take the backing off of our tape here on our cardstock first. And we're going to take it off of our chipboard pieces here. Okay, now we're going to center this again, top to bottom, left to right, just covering up those spaces in between our chipboard. I have to press it down in the middle and then just press it up like this. Okay, I'm going to burnish that really good. And now that we put that piece of cardstock on there, we need to find our little bins again in our book. So once we have it burnished, take your bone folder, gently find your creases again, and just press that cardstock into that space and fold up your cover. Flip around to the other side, same thing. Find that crease gently with your bone folder. You don't want to poke a hole in your cardstock. Believe me, I've done that before. Okay, so there we have it. That's our cute little book. Now, we're going to go ahead and decorate the left side, making the little accordion pocket. So, what you're going to need for that is the cardstock that matches. Now, since I'm using craft paper, I am going to use one of the um, Graphic 45 square tags in the craft. It's a little bit darker, but I'm okay with that. Um, they come in, the great thing about the Graphic 45 tags is they come in black, ivory, or craft. So, you can usually find something that's going to work for you. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and make our pocket first and then we'll attach it. But before you attach your pocket, you need to cover this up. So you want to cover it up with your design paper. And I cut this piece of design paper at four. No, what did I cut it at? I don't remember what I cut it at. Well, I have to measure it. <laughs> These are five and a half, so probably five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Yes. Actually, I made it a little bit. It's just a smidge over five and a quarter, just because we've got that space here and I want to go as close to the edge as I can. But the height is seven and a quarter. So you want to put this down first before you attach your accordion pocket. But we're going to make our accordion pocket right now. So get your scoreboard out. Grab you one of the Graphic 45 square tags. And again, I'm going to use the craft. Love these tags. Love, love, love. So you're going to need one tag. And you're going to need a piece of cardstock that matches the tag, and your, which is craft for me. And it's going to be measure four and a half by nine and three quarters. Okay, so we're going to take that and we're going to put that in our scoreboard right here. And we're going to score with the nine and three quarters across the top. We're going to score at four and seven eighths. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and fold it like this. Actually, I'm going to fold it this way so my writing's on the inside. <laughs> so we scored it and fold it, and it's pretty much in half. Okay, now we're going to take our tag and we're going to put our tag in here. 
with the flat edge here and we're going to make a score mark at one and three quarters. I'm going to flip it over this way so the pretty side is up. One and three quarters here. Again, these tags are nice and thick, so you're going to need to score a couple of times. Okay, one and three quarters, and then we're going to score. We're going to move over to the two inch line and score again. Okay, so we have a score line at one and three quarters and one at two. Okay, so we're done scoring that. So that's going to be our little top of our little accordion pocket. Now we need to make the sides for our little pocket. And you're gonna need two pieces of cardstock that measure two inches by four and seven eighths. You need two of those. You're gonna put those in your scoreboard with the two inches across the top and you're gonna score every half an inch. So you're gonna score it a half. One. And one and a half. Do that to both pieces. Again, two inches is across the top. We're going to score at a half inch, one inch, and one and three quarters, or one and a half inch, excuse me. So half, one, and one and a half. We did that to both pieces. Now we're done with our scoreboard. We'll put that away. So because this is an accordion pocket, we, we're going to accordion fold these or fan fold or mountain valley or whatever you want to call it. So I take the first one and I fold it back like this. And then I'm going to fold forward and fold back. Okay. Make sure you burnish it really, really well. This is going to be the side of our pocket. So it should look like this. Do the same thing to the other piece. Now we're going to go ahead and set those aside and we're going to take our little tag that we scored in those two places. We're going to fold on both of those score lines. So you want to fold them so the shorter piece is at the back and your pretty grommet side is the front of your flap. So I've scored the first one. Now I'm going to go ahead and score the second one. Burnish those really well because we need to have a little bit of a, a gusset here because we're making an accordion. Pocket, so we want to make sure we have space there like this. Okay, and we've already folded, scored, and folded this one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our little side pieces and we're going to put them right here on the inside. Okay, what you want to do is you want to have the you've got you want it to look like this. Okay, so we're going to put so it looks kind of like a well, if I'm looking at it, it looks like a W. <laughs> and we want the two raw edges facing inward. So we have a raw edge here and a raw edge here, and then the two folded edges are to the outside. That's how we want to put it in. So with it flattened down, you're going to put score tape on this first piece, flip it over, and put it on the back. And I'm going to use the 3 8 for this, which works really good on a half-inch hinge or tab or whatever you all want to call it. So I put it on that side, I'm going to flip it over and put it on this side. And we're going to do the same thing to the other one. We want the two raw edges of the cardstock facing inward. And we're going to put it on the top one and on flip it over and put it on the back side. Burnish your tape really well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put these on both sides. And again, I have my um, full, two folded edges facing out. And we're going to put them right, that folded edge, right up against 
the side of my cardstock here. Now you want to make sure when you're putting it down that you don't go over your score line here. So if you need to trim these a little bit at the top, that's okay to do that. You can either trim them after you put them down, just don't go too far over here. So here's my fold, and I want to make sure that I can fold this up. So I'm going to take the backing off of this piece first. And I'm going to go ahead and face it this way. I've got my folded, two folded edges, a fold here and fold here, and they're facing on the outside or the top. I'm going to start down here at the bottom and just make sure that I'm right where that score line is. I'm not going over and line it up with the edge. Okay. And burnish it down. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Again, my two folded edges are going to be facing out. My one folded edge is facing to the center. I'm going to take the back off and stick this one down. Again, I'm right next to the score line, but not on top of it. And we are going to stick it down. Perfect. Well, not perfect, but it looks good. Okay. So we burnished that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fold this over and stick those down. But as you can see, I've got a little bit of hanging over here. So I'm just going to take my scissors and just trim it off. It's all good. It's going to be the back of the pocket. No one's going to see it because we're going to glue it to our book. Okay. So now we're going to fold this over and stick that down. So we're going to take the backing off of here and on this side. With those flattened down, just take this bottom section and fold it over. Stick it down. There's our little accordion pocket. Cute, huh? Now this is going to be our top. So what we want to do is we want to grab our book. But again, we, you want to make sure that you put your design paper down before you attach this because we're going to attach this next okay so what I'm going to do is instead of using this design paper I'm just going to use a plain piece of cardstock here just because I might want to use something else for this okay so I'm going to go ahead and attach this down I'm just going to use my ATG gun for that So this is going to go here just like this, centering it with a little border. Again, this is representing my design paper, okay? So this would really be this right here, okay? Because then we're going to put this on top of it like this. All right. But I'm just using solid cardstock for the tutorial. Alrighty, so now what we want to do is we want to add this here and this here. So we're going to leave an even border around the top and the bottom. Same with this. So in order to know where this is going to go, I measured in the book, as you can see right here. Um, I measured one inch one inch, yeah, one inch from the second score line. So here's my first score line, my second score line. I'm going to measure one inch. And I'm going to make a little mark here with my pencil. There. That's where we know we're going to line up the top of our pocket with right there, okay? And then when we get that all done, 
we're gonna stick it down. I think my one inch was from the first one. Yeah, from the first score line. Not the second one. Let's see. So that when your pocket is done, the top to the bottom should measure six inches. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> From this, this is your second score line, but from your first score line, put your ruler at the one inch line and then make a little mark here. So one inch here and one inch here. Okay. Now, this is where we're going to know to line this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my score tape from here, the bottom edge, to right here. Just one piece, just so I can attach this really quick. And then we'll add a whole mechanism to the the book. Okay, so I've taken the backing off my score tape. I've got my pocket with the opening right here, and I'm going to just go ahead and use those pencil lines as a guide, and it should fit right on the side. should be pretty even. Stick it down. Okay, there's our little accordion pocket. Super cute, huh? You love it? I love it. We're going to burnish that really good. Now we're going to go ahead and add this to our left side of our folio. So again, you can use whatever adhesive you want. I'm going to go ahead and use score tape because I like it. <laughs> Anytime I'm adhering some sort of an element, interactive element to my mini albums, I like to use a really strong adhesive. Probably overkill, but oh well. I don't want it to go anywhere, so I'm going to burnish this tape really good. Take the backing off. Alrighty, now we're going to stick it down on our book. Now remember, you need to put your design paper down first <laughs> before you add your pocket. Otherwise, you won't be, you'll just won't see any pretty paper there. So I'm just using this as my design paper, but you know what? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I like to center it top so I have an even space um, or from the on both sides and the bottom. If that's what I did. Let's see. Yep, as you can see in the book here, I have um, the same amount of space on the sides and the top's a little bit bigger. Okay, so here we go. We're just going to line it up there and I just eyeball it. You can measure it, but mm, that's not how I roll. <laughs> and so we're just going to stick it down and then burnish really, 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 really well because we want to make sure this sticks to our book. Now again, I didn't put any, I still have my gusset here. I just added my score tape to that first score line on the back side. Okay, there we go, super cute. Now you can add your little magnet. And I have a lot of people ask about magnets. How do you attach them? That's why I like the basic gray ones. They're super easy. You take off the little plastic piece. You need one plus and one minus. The hardest part about these magnets is getting them out of the package. Just saying. So we have a plus and a minus, and then the way I like to do is I like to kiss them together with the paper backing showing. 
and then you're going to go ahead and just see where you're going to need to put this. I like to put mine in the middle, not too close to the edges because they will jump around and and um, slide sometimes underneath your paper. So you're going to take the backing off of one side only. It doesn't matter if it's the plus or the minus, just pick one. It's all good. And then we're going to stick it down like right there. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and take the backing off the other piece, that's the other magnet on top, and then just go ahead and fold it down, press it, and open it up. Now your magnet's in place. Now what I like to do is I like to just put a little bit of score tape um, on the top of my magnets, just while I'm working before I get my design paper just so they don't shift on me. Just like this, okay? So there, we have that side done. How super cute is that? Oh my goodness. Now we're gonna work on the right side and that's gonna be our waterfall mechanism. So what we're gonna need for that is we're gonna need a base. That's the key to a waterfall is a base. So your waterfall base is gonna measure five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And then you're going to need some waterfall pages. And I did four, I think. Yes, four. And the pages are going to be four and three quarters. Four and three quarters this way by five and a quarter. Okay, so we've got four of those. So we're going to go ahead and score those first. So grab your scoreboard again. Oopsie. Now. They're four and three quarters by five and a quarter. You wanna put the four and three quarters across the top and you're gonna score either a half an inch is what you want. It's easier for me to score on the right hand side so I'm gonna score mine at four and a quarter. But it's just, it's still a half an inch. A half an inch is a half an inch is a half an inch. <laughs> so do that to all four pages. Again, your four and three quarters is across the top, the top and you're gonna score at a half an inch. Again, I'm doing it at four and a quarter because that's a half inch away. Just doing that on one side, we're making a tab. So there's our four pages. We don't need to score our waterfall base, so we're gonna set those aside. Now, um, in the book, I have this little flap right here that holds my waterfall pages down, so we're gonna make that piece right now. And that little flap is five and three quarters by six and a quarter. And we're gonna score on the five and three quarter side. So we're gonna score at five and a quarter or a half an inch if you think it's more accurate over here. I'm just right-handed, it's easier for me to score this way. Okay, so that piece is done. Now at the bottom of our waterfall, we got these little doors here, These, so we're gonna need to score those pieces. So we're gonna need two of those. So we're gonna set that aside with our waterfall. And these two little pieces are gonna measure three and one eighth by five and a quarter. So again, you're gonna need two, three and an eighth by five and a quarter. And you're gonna put these in here and you're gonna score at a half an inch. on both of those. Okay, that's all the scoring we're gonna do. So we're done with our scoreboard. We're gonna add our score tape to our little half inch tabs and we're gonna make our waterfall piece. So let's add our pages first. So grab your waterfall pages and your base and we're gonna go ahead and fold on all of our score lines. If you want to round your corners of your waterfall like I did in the sample, now would be a good time to do that. You can do it afterwards, but it's easier to work with just a piece of paper than it is something that's already put together. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add our tape to our tabs. Okay, so those are done. We're gonna go ahead and burnish 
those really well and we're going to attach them to our waterfall base. Okay, so when you attach, this was this is always the key for me to keep my waterfall pages straight is to make a base. So what I'm and I'm going to attach my pages directly to this opposed to directly in the book. So now we're going to take the backing off of our little half inch tab and it's folded down and we're going to line up this corner with this corner here and make sure to side. So I just line up the corner edge. Once you get the first one on, the rest will line up like good little waterfall pages. I'm going to line it up right there. Stick it down. Burnish it. Now, for me, what I like to do is flip the next one up and then I like to flip it around because <laughs> it's easier for me to work this way and I it seems my pages they just look a little nicer when I do it this way. So there's a little tip for you. Maybe it'll work for you. So take the backing off the next one. Now you're gonna butt the folded edge up with that raw edge of that tab that you just attached. Just gonna line it up there, stick it down. And just go ahead and add the other two pages. Okay, there we go. There's our little waterfall pages. Pretty fabulous. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to add the little elements to, well, you know what? No, we're going to do that. We're going to add our flap first, the one that's going to go over here and close all these little pages up. So what we want to do with this, again, if you want to round your corners, you would want to do that right now. We're going to take this flap that we created with our score line. We're going to fold in the score line. Now what we want to do, normally we would go ahead and attach this. We need to add our tape to the inside of our little score length. So we want to attach it to the back piece of our back of our base like this, okay? So we're going to, we've got it right this. We're going to flip it over and we're going to add it to the inside of our half inch tab. So add your score tape to the inside. Burnish it really well. So now when you fold over your tab, your tape is on the inside, okay? And we're going to attach this right here. Now what I did is I held it up like this and I just kind of eyeballed it so it was centered. So I had an even space top to bottom, left to right. Held it where I wanted it to. I opened it up. And as you can see, you don't want to have it on top of your score line. You want to make sure it's going to fold. Here we go. Super cute, huh? And I don't want this. Okay, there we go. Yay. Now we're going to go ahead and make our little doors here. So we've got these two pieces that we've scored. We're going to go ahead and fold on our score line. And we're going to add our tape just like we did with our pages, fold it over and add it to the back and then we're going to stick these right here. Okay, one's going to go on this side and one's going to go on this side and they should meet pretty much in the middle. Yes. Okay, before we add them though, we need to add our little string closures. So what I did for this is I just used a little three quarter inch hole punch and you're going to need some either some twine. I like to use the wax cord just because it's, it's got a little wax on it and it's a little more stronger. You're gonna need a couple of brads, your paper piercer, and um, yeah. So what you got, what I did is I punched out four little circles of my cardstock and I doubled them. So I glued two of them back to back and two of them back to back, poked a hole with my paper piercer in the middle, and then I'm gonna take my little, and I'm gonna line these up here or I want them, again, you need to put your design paper on here first before you add your screen, your string closure, okay? So make sure you do that first. And then we're gonna go ahead and just poke a little hole there. And we're gonna line this one up. 
and poke a little hole right next to it on this side and add this one. And here's just a cute little tip for you. You know those, you have, you're fortunate enough to get those little dies that go with these Graphic 45 tags, the little center hole that it cuts out right here. Look, it's perfect. You can put that on top of there to cover up your brad or you can put it on top and then poke your hole. How cute is that? It's the perfect little size. See, there you go, save that. All right, so I'm gonna grab my paper piercer and poke a hole in this really quick. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to put this on here. And again, I've already got my design paper on here. And we're going to go ahead and put those wherever you want. You want them too close to the edge. So I'm just eyeballing it. You can mark the center if you want, but I'm not going to. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my string. a little bit bigger. I'm going to put my string in there really quick. I'm going to take my brad, put my brad in there. Now you can use your hole punch, but I found that sometimes the hole's a little too big, depending on the brads you're going to use. And then we're going to stick that inside this right here. Okay, flip it over and add our little, bend the little prongs down, okay? Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the other side. Make sure we got it in the same spot here. So I just set them side by side and just eyeball it. So I'm thinking that looks pretty good right there. Poke a little hole. Put our little brad in. And open the little wings up. Flatten them down. Okay, so now we can go ahead. We've got our little string closure done. Now we can go ahead and add our tape to the tabs and attach this piece. Okay, I'm gonna take the backing off the first one right here. And I'm going to attach it. It should fit right along the bottom here and right up against that half inch tab. And stick it down. Okay, now we're going to do the other side. Take the backing off. Again, we're going to line it up with the edge and the folded edges right on the edge of the base and stick it down. Okay, and then there's your little string closure. Super, super cute, isn't it? And then you can add a little charm, you can just tie a knot, whatever you want to do for that. So then that's going to go like this, this is going to go like this. Now what I did is I went ahead and wanted a magnet here. So again, we would attach a magnet the same way we did here. We would attach to the front one here and here and just fold it down. So you can either do that before or after, but once this piece is ready, it's going to fit right here. Now the folded edge of your little piece here should line right up and fit right on there. Oh my goodness, how cute is that? So we're gonna add our tape to the back of this.
Okay, bring your book back in and it's going to go on this panel and it should fit right in there. I'm going to line it up. Let's see, you got a little tape show on there along the bottom. So I have an even border. Just like that. And then open this all back up <laughs> and burnish it down. Now what you can do on this particular flap, if you want to make sure it's going to lay a little bit when you get pictures in there, is when you scored your half an inch here, then you can move in an eighth of an inch and make another little score line. That'll give you a tiny little gusset. Um, it might help it lay a little flatter once you get photos in. Um, that might have been what I did with the first one, but you know what? Make it work. Once you get your magnet in there, it'll work. So there we go, everybody. That's how I created the little folio that went inside my little pop-up box using the Graphic 45 Sunkiss paper collection. There you have it. Thanks for watching. Bye.